All right, I'm back. We got some Lewitt Brewing Company right here with a kind of neon tropical vibe. This is a uh, tropical stout is what they call it. Let's see what we got here. Part of the North Bank Brewers. That must be like some sort of collective or association. Um, brewed in Vancouver, Washington. 6.4 ABV stout made with toasted coconut, pandan leaves, and milk sugar. Somebody is going to have to help me out with what exactly the fuck is pandan leaves. I am unfamiliar with that. With tropical stout, nice little playful label there. And that's about all it's going to give us. Let's crack it open. And we'll pour it into this Omnigong brewing glass, this nice hefty snifter. Get a look at the color, we'll smell it, we'll taste it, see what it's all about. All right, we got the Omnigong brewing glass right there. Oh, that smells nice. A bit of that uh, toasted coconut comes through. Um, on the nose there very nice I think this is gonna be a good one we got about solid finger if not a finger and some change of light brown tan colored head a nice nice beautiful nose on this one let's go ahead and uh, crack into this oh yeah this little 6% beer is packing some serious flavor. That is pretty good. All right, we coated the tongue, we coated the mouth. Let's go in for another one, the true taste. Okay, right off the bat, it's not super viscous. It's just kind of, it's just kind of, um. A little bit more thick than usual um, I wouldn't call this crisp or anything like that it does have a little bit of viscosity but it's kind of in the medium realm there's definitely not chewy or anything like that ton of that toasted coconut comes through it's very the coconut portion is very nice I don't get a huge hit of sweetness but I know it's there because uh, of that milk sugar. Um, it's not like cloyingly sweet or something that's too rich to have a whole pint of. I have no idea what pandan leaves are. I'm unfamiliar with it. But there is this twang that I'm unfamiliar with. And it's kind of leaving a long finish on the palate. And it's kind of hard for me to describe. But maybe... That is a byproduct of the pandan leaves. Regardless, this is a pretty damn tasty beer. Um, the coconut, a little bit of chocolate, you know, kind of in the dark chocolate realm. A little bit of uh, bitterness, but it's kind of washed over by the sweetness. Really enjoyable, though. All right. Let's get into this shade, man. I'm excited for this one. Just got this in a surprise mail call today. This is the Great Bear and you can kind of see as the light hits the label just the right way, the stars kind of pop out at you. Really nice looking label. So this is a Murphy and McNeil soap. The artwork was designed by Chicano Designs. And Black Mountain Shaving dreamed up the concept and did the fragrance. So he did the scent on this one. So... Get a look at the side label. Black Mountain Shaving. The soap is called The Great Bear. And then there's Murphy and McNeil and Chicano Designs right there. On the bottom, we got the Kodiak Soap Base, which is made with bear tallow. Coming in at 4.0 ounces. Um, it is a very nice smelling soap. I can already get a nice hint of it um, even though it's not even facing in my direction it's a quite firm soap but not so firm that you can't easily press into it 
but definitely not what I would describe as soft. I wouldn't describe it as a crop um, by any means. I'm using my Thirsty Badger Shave Bowl today, a beautiful shave bowl product made in Canada. And we're going to be using our Bullseye Brushworks brush, also a beautiful product made in Canada. And you can kind of see that deep, dark purple, a little, a little smudge of lather on the bottom there, but this is just a beautiful, stout little brush with a Odin's Beard Badger knot on top. Let's go ahead and wet the face and get right into this. So this is the third installment of the collaborations between uh, Murphy McNeil Black Mountain Shaving and Chicano Designs. And this one, its predecessors were Nantahala, which was the first one, and then Pisgah, which was the second release. And so the Great Bear is actually the third release um, in that series. And what a wonderful series it has been. All three of those are certified bangers, in my opinion. I absolutely love all three. I cannot wait to get my hands on the EDP for this one. Um, I should disclose that this was sent as a surprise gift from Murphy and McNeil to me. So if you want to uh, take that into consideration, feel free to do that. But <clears throat> I have been a fan of this series <laughs> way before I was sent free shit. And I fully intended on buying this with my own money when it released. Um, I've been tuned in to the hype train and I have just been dying to get my hands on this uh, set. So if you're interested in this, after this video, if you're interested in picking up this set, it'll be available from Murphy and McNeil on April 7th, 2022. And let me just take a note, a look at my cheat sheet here, at 9 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. So, if you're interested, April 7th, 9 a.m. CST. All right, I think we got a good lather on the face. I may have slightly overhydrated it, but I ain't mad at it because too much hydration is not a bad thing. We got the Schick new improved Type F injector today. This handsome piece of history um, is a quite rare example of uh, Schick injector razors. It's a single edge razor that injects from the side into the head and you never actually have to touch the blade if you don't want to. An absolutely stunning example of history right here. I love Schick injectors and this one is just awesome. So let's get right into it. Sense strength on this one is probably 6.5, probably knocking at the door of 7. Definitely bold and banging. And this scent is beautiful. I love it. I think I think this one is going to be a crowd pleaser. I'm pretty positive anybody that picks this up is going to be able to find something about it that they enjoy. I just find it hard to believe somebody wouldn't like this scent. It's uh, not too dark that I wouldn't rock this in the summertime. It's not too fresh and light that I wouldn't rock this in the wintertime. 
It's just right in that happy medium. And of course, you wear what you want when you want. Don't let me tell you. But I think this is right in that happy medium where you could wear this all year round. Not going to offend anybody. As a matter of fact, you'll probably be pulling quite a few compliments if you, uh, if you wear this one out. It has a plethora of delicious scent notes. And we'll go over that um, in just a minute. But it comes across... It has this nice heart of fruit character. Um, it has plum and fig and bergamot. And then it has like this top note of honey. And the honey just, the honey is just done so beautifully in here. Now it's not too, too sweet. So don't. Don't start thinking this is um, possibly too sweet with the fruit notes and the honey note because it's not not overly sweet. Not in my opinion. I have definitely had scents that uh, were way too fruity and way too sweet for my preferences. I do not think this one is overly sweet. And I think it has a few key notes that maybe hold it down. So let's talk a little bit about it. We got top notes of cinnamon, honey, osmansis, bergamot, and then middle notes, plum, fig, rum, labdanum, artemisia, and then the bottom notes are tonka bean, vanilla, cashmere wood, cedar, and patchouli. So if you see what I mean when I say it kind of has a nice fruit heart and a nice honey on top. I do think that things like the uh, the Artemisia, which, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's a flower. Um, I think that is also detectable ever so slightly. And it does kind of something like a crescendo. Um, at the tail end of the fragrance. It's quite nice. I'm unsure if the Osmansis is doing that as well. But uh, it does kind of have like... When you take a nice whiff, I feel like you get the progression of like the honey, the fruit, the more um, sturdy, warm base. Not too warm though. And then there's like a crescendo. Um, and that I feel like that might be like the floral... Um, element. I do really, really like this this fragrance. I think um, Joe and Black Mountain Shaving did a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job. All right, let's paint on another layer of this Kodiak soap base, which I have never had a problem with really good stuff when you dial it in properly it's nice and dense and luxurious slick as all get out never been hard to uh, whip up a nice lather with uh, the Kodiak soap base <laughs> as you can see plenty left within the brush I just kinda have to uh, squeegee it out but plenty of lather left, ton of volume here. That's all the all the slickness I could ask for. And really, this scent <laughs> hasn't left. Like sometimes you go nose blind to a fragrance. This scent hasn't left. It has been obvious from the moment I cracked the tub. Um, all the way up to this very second. I've been smelling it consistently the whole time. Which is, which is a real bang for your buck type experience. Like, I haven't went nose blind whatsoever. And I buy scented soaps to enjoy the scent, obviously. That's why I like scents that are bold and banging and strong. Because I want to enjoy that fucking scent. <laughs> Alright, cheers.
All right. Pass two against the green. So I have every intention of picking the EDP, the matching EDP for this set. I have every intention of picking that bad boy up. This is some damn good shit. My last two, uh, <laughs> my last two shaving pickups. Wow, well, I shouldn't really call this one a pickup because it was uh, it was free. It was a gift. But the last two uh, sets of uh, soap and aftershave that came into my shave den, they have been absolute bangers, man. This one here, um, <laughs> and the uh, Strike Gold Shave, First Line Shave release, uh, the collaboration that they did, <laughs> those two are really setting the bar fucking high. For themselves and for everyone else um, the rest of the year. Because, hot damn, <laughs> were these two releases good ones, man. I can fully endorse both releases. I would say if you have any interest in this set... The Great Bear, I would say don't even hesitate. The cool thing about Murphy and McNeil as well is if it sells out, it'll be back. And um, he does do the initial release in the Kodiak soap base, which is the one that I'm using. But down the line, he might switch over to the Aeon soap base which is a beef tallow formula. And regardless of which one you end up getting, it's gonna be a high quality soap. So nothing to worry about. All right. Very nice. I notice I got a few little weepers right there. I think I uh, took the head off of a few blemishes, but Nothing really to worry about. Feels like a feels like a nice and close shave. I always have right here on the edges where I have a little bit of growth that's hard to knock down. Today, I'm BBS. And then I have this swirl right on the Adam's apple. Today, I'm BBS. So, I am mad at it. Let's go ahead and rinse down. And then we'll get into the post shave. And, uh, man, do I like Murphy and McNeil's aftershave bottle. I think it's one of the classiest, sexiest aftershave bottles that we have available to us in this wet shaving hobby. The frosted glass, the faux leather cap, um, and then, of course, you can't go, can't go wrong when Chicano Designs is doing the label artwork. It's just like... It's just like um, everything's hitting on all cylinders, man. It's a, it's a great packaging. All right. We got the Lancaster Razor Works Black Sheep Towel in deep red. And it doesn't really get much more plush, much more luxurious than one of these Black Sheep Towels. I always like winding down my shave with a nice pat down from the Lancaster tail. <clears throat> See if I can get the majority of this lather out of the beard. Then we will work our way to the aftershave splash. All right. 
What a shave. <laughs> what a shave. All right, let me clear some counter space. On to the aftershave splash right here. The Great Bear. Awesome matching artwork. And you can kind of see that uh, frosted glass bottle, faux leather cap. Nice artwork on the back of the label as well. They didn't skimp you there. Uh, it looks like this one is an alcohol aftershave, but it also has some good uh, other ingredients. Willow bark extract, witch hazel, aloe uh, vegetable, glycerin, green tea extract, and then we get into some shit that I can't pronounce. Um, the cool thing about Murphy and McNeil aftershaves is that you can choose to have it alcohol splash or non-alcohol splash. You can choose to have it have real menthol or synthetic culotta menthol. Um, I mean, you can really customize your aftershave experience. It also has a quality industry standard restrictor, which is quite restrictive, so you can really give it a vigorous shake and not have to worry about wasting any uh, product. Man. <laughs> and the aftershave is just beautiful. Those fruits in the middle and the honey on top is just magical. Oh yeah. A little bit of stinging where I had um, those weepers. Those little nicks on the neck. But uh, that was pretty much just a quick flash. And now it's gone. And I know... My skin is going to feel great once this soaks in. It's not a heavy aftershave. It'll soak in really quickly and leave your skin feeling great. All right, guys. That one went a little bit long, but uh, I think I got a little bit carried away with my enjoyment of the shave. So, shit happens. All right. If you're interested in picking this one up, April 7th, 9 a.m. CST. Um, let me know if you pick it up. Let me know if you like it. I really look forward to hearing from you guys. This one, two thumbs up. My other thumb is occupied carrying my beer. And while we're at it, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I appreciate you, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Oh, yeah. <clears throat>